Ash is here with Peter Connolly, Hi. and today is our last stream before Kickstarter finishes, and it finishes tomorrow at 11 p.m. UK time. Peter, how kind of a journey was this? It's been an it's been an it's I know <laughs> I think I can I'm from Geordie Land, but yeah. um, it's been a fantastic journey. It's been you know it's not been without its ups downs, but it's mostly ups and you know it's great that we've actually this time now we've you know we pass our main goal. Um, which just opens doors and gives us uh, lots of opportunities to make this something special, you know. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm buzzing. I, 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 you know, I can't wait for tomorrow to end. I just want to get, I just want to get stuck in and make things happen now, you know. So it's all good from my end. We saw a few uh, adjustments and cancellations last minute for because people saw that clearly we are being funded, so they decided to decrease their pledge or cancel it rather. Um, what what do you think drives people like uh, people do to do that and what are your thoughts on that as well i think uh, it's perfectly normal you know it's it's i don't have a problem with people canceling and, and um adjusting pledges i think that people will um pledge a little bit higher so we get to the main goal and i think that what a lot of people think is if we get to the main goal we're safe but if we get enough cancellations and go back under the 60 basically the kickstarter doesn't succeed so i mean i understand if you need to cancel you know if, 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 uh, if some life events take take priority which is you know absolutely fine but we have to bear in mind that you know if kind of for example um 500 people drop their pledges by 10 pound that's five thousand pound that will take us three thousand pound under our limit and we'll fail the, the you know the main goal so um i just wanted to make it a little bit clearer that you know yeah w it's successful at the moment but could still fail you know so uh, we need to bear that in mind you know um but by all means don't feel any pressure to not take priority of what you need to do so yeah we have 31 hours to go until this finishes oh that's a crazy countdown this um as usual send us your questions wherever you're watching this on twitter facebook or youtube just leave um uh, comment in the live chat thingy and Jennifer Miller who's watching this is sending us all the questions through and I'll be reading them out to Peter or myself and we will answer them as soon as we can by the way Murti is currently sick so he was supposed to be here but he's sick today that's why we can't have him here but hopefully he's, he feels he's here in spirit <laughs> yeah he's here in spirit we sh were supposed to get the carbon cut out of him but I don't think that will perform as well as Murti um, <laughs> Another thing about uh, money matters is obviously we reached uh, 60,000 and we're currently at 62,724 pounds. Uh, how are we going to use the excess? Uh, it'll be used wisely. I mean, I really need to kind of, you know, tomorrow evening or the first thing on Tuesday, I need to kind of work out what we've got. Yeah, get very particular about the costs and what we can spend and what we can't spend. I need to do a lot of work to try and work out how to get the best out of that money we get. Obviously, if we get 180,000, we can do it all guns blazing, you know, orchestra. Um, if we, you know, if it stays where it's at or doesn't go much above, we will kind of look at the ways of making that money work into, you know, into a more of a realization of where we want to be. Um, you know, we need another 30,000 pound or just less than to, Get Richard Niles on board, but you know if we reach seventy thousand or like eighty thousand, and we don't quite hit our stretch goal one, which includes Doctor Niles, um, I, I, will, I will look into ways of utilizing them. So you know, I don't, you know, even if it's a case of we can get them fifty percent of the music, oh, um, like a song or two, you know, a song or two, we'll, we'll we'll definitely make good use of the money. It'll be. Um, it won't just be a case of receiving the money and spending it. We'll look at what we can and can't do and what's possible. And we'll maybe have to cut a few corners here and there. But, you know, the, the end result, the end goal will always be quality. You know, that's that's where we want to be. We want to maintain the quality, whether we hit 60, 120, 180 or wherever. We want to make sure the product is, you know, is, is consistently of a very, very high quality. You know, it just um, it would just be nice to be able to spend a bit money to, to do a little bit more here and there kind of thing which make life a little bit easier and the product a lot better but yeah it depends on where we are um on you know the 11 p.m 
Monday tomorrow, evening, tomorrow evening yeah. or tomorrow yeah we all <laughs> <laughs> it was like you know the first two weeks just felt like it dragged on and on and then the last week and a half just blew over so yeah. but yeah we'll, we'll ensure the money's spent wisely um, with the intention of you know the, the final goal so yeah so basically if we reached more money by the end of this kickstart we can always try and utilize say Tina Kuo and Julie Elvin and Richard Niles obviously for say some of the five main themes to have Absolutely. them all in there imagine how great that would be um, and obviously so if you are still thinking to increase your pledge or you're thinking to pledge still uh, we say do pledge even though we did reach the main goal every single penny that goes now and will be invested wisely to better the music whether it's going to be involving Richard Tina or Julie Absolutely, yeah. so by all means please do and uh, we still have some uh, concept arts for sale we still have some statues you know these pretty things we have lots of um, pendants for you to claim so by all means please do that um, if you would like to pledge twice or three times you can do that as well by either registering again or just using a guest checkout a guest checkout yes. yeah you can you can yeah so by all means if you have some extra money you would like to pledge or you would like to claim say two artworks or three artworks you can do that just make sure you register twice three times or just use guest checkout uh, it can be on the same card as well speaking of card i would like to once again talk about the safety of stripe um we recently found out we actually didn't find out recently we knew this for quite a while but we recently started telling you guys uh, because it seems like it's important things for you to know some of you were worried to put uh, your card details on the kickstarter uh, we would like to reassure you that kickstarter uses stripe which is used by amazon so if you use amazon you trust amazon you should trust kickstarter because it's essentially the same system so it's safe it's secure it's insured so please don't think that you uh that your details will leak somewhere no, you know, no, 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 it's, no. All, it's all safe it's all well trusted i back stuff on kickstart i know you do, I do well. actually yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know it's all fine uh we also would like to say things like people are asking questions about well before we go actually into actual questions um there is a request let's say hello to zachary uh, hello zachary who's watching us on youtube i believe and he is asking whether either of us been to Mission Mission Hampton because his ancestor comes from there. No. <laughs> no. Have you been to Ashgabat, Zachary? Because that's where I'm from. Uh, but yeah, so feel free to send your questions in. We are reading them. We are answering them as much as. Um, oh, uh, Simon Butcher just joined us on Facebook. Hi, Hi Simon. Simon. He did some amazing documentaries on the Tomb Raider one and two, I believe. Uh, yeah, definitely that's Simon. Uh, he's from Germany. Uh, so yeah, the question is, people are asking whether stuff will be available after Kickstarter ends. It's safe for us to say now that there's going to be a shop online uh, a couple of weeks after Kickstarter ends. You'll be able to purchase uh, CD, you'll be able to purchase posters, you'll be able to purchase shit music and t-shirts. However, the prices there will be slightly higher. The prices currently on the Kickstarter are cheaper because you guys are investing into this you're yes. making this happen so it's only fair for you to enjoy the discount uh, kickstarter backers will be able to um, purchase additional cd but we should also mention that the cd that you'll be purchasing from the shop will be different to the luxurious packaging you have on kickstarter that you probably saw by now yeah all all, all the um, all, all the products on the kickstarter um bar one or two we need to work this out accurately but what you buy on the kickstarter will be exclusive exclusive to the kickstarter so everything you buy um on the kickstarter you know you'll not be able to buy in the shop later it will be for example the cd will be a nice deluxe posh cd where, um, which will be unique to the kickstarter but if you buy the, if you decide you want to wait to buy the cd from the shop it'll be just your standard dual case double cd whatever it is we you know however many amount of cds we'll be releasing with that but the, um, yeah, the Kickstarter is unique. Um, beyond that, it's going to be kind of standard, you know. So yeah, so things like DVD, um, five point one DVD, things like um, sheet music or posters, they will be the same in the shop, but they will be more expensive. So if you would like to get them now, exactly, get yes, them now. Yeah. But CD, the luxurious packaging CD, will not be available outside Kickstarter. That's it. We're only ordering them 
as many as get from you guys or this um that's it it's not gonna be kickstarter users will get 10 percent discount on the shop but it will still be higher than what you currently can get on kickstarter but we believe that we should give you that 10 percent discount because again you are investors you're making this happen uh, but please if you would like to get something more now do this in the next 31 hours otherwise gone um, another thing about the shop uh, it will support paypal it will support stripe as well so uh, those of you who are unable to back us because you don't have paypal or you don't have a card you will be able to but if you can't find a friend with a credit card uh, in the next 31 hours we suggest to do that because you won't be able to get um, a luxurious packaging CD or it will be more expensive to buy from the shop later on as well uh, that's done with the shop Zachary we want to know which location would you like to see uh, in the next Tomb Raider game he wants to go uh, he wants Lara to go to Norway I personally want to see the next game in Egypt because I missed Egypt that's my favorite one South Shields obviously <laughs> <laughs> you need to explain that to people where that well, is. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm originally from a town called South Shields, which is um, kind of south east of Newcastle, just over the Tyne, the south side of the Tyne. Um, it's, where I was, it's where I was basically born and where I grew up. Um, and it's beautiful. So, yeah, Laura would look there. I think she'd, I think she'd kick ass in, um, in, in South the Shields. The Razor of Primark. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for lost a discount voucher in Primark. And, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> Lara Croft raids with Greg's, yes. <laughs> Have you ever considered, that's a question from Ferulium. Have you ever considered recording with Office Group somewhere abroad because it's cheaper? Say that again, sorry? Have you ever considered recording this music with the Office Group abroad because it's cheaper, like say in Czech Republic? Yeah, um, I mean, with all the options, it's definitely something I'll investigate. Um, with however much money we get um, at, at the end of the project. I mean, the, obviously the, the idea will be to have the best musicians in the best studios, this, that, and the other, but if it means we still get a string section or a brass section or a string the brass section recorded in a, um, in a cheaper, you know, orchestra, as long as we get, the, as long as it sounds right, we, we don't mind, you know, where it's done. Um, but, you know, it's it, it would be nice to have it done by the top session players in the UK at a, at a you know a, a top studio in the UK, but it doesn't really matter as long as I'm sure if we went to Czech Republic and, and selected uh, you know a couple of sections, they would be just as good, if not you know. Just an example, at Czech Republic, by the way, it could be somewhere. I know else. it could be anywhere else. <laughs> that's, yeah, but yeah, there's there, there's there's plenty of options there with regards to um, you know, the recording orchestra. I mean, it might not necessarily have to be a thirty-two piece string section. It could be a string, a sixteen string section, a, a sixteen piece string section played twice do you know what i mean they're big and sound like it's a 32 piece but I, I definitely need to look at the figures and find out what we can spend and where we can spend them we definitely will be investing all the excess money into, things into something like yeah that, i'll not so. be talking this but yeah. we're not guaranteeing it's going to be an orchestra yeah <laughs> because we don't want people to be pissed off at us when we're done but we will spend the money say for richard nass or um, tina yeah. or yes, exactly, yeah. uh, julie allen uh, so yeah but everything that now being invested into us from this point on obviously we're part of 3k will be invested into improving the music and every fund we get from the shop as well goes into that there'll be um certain things available in the shop as well that's um that's are not related to this particular project uh, i think I'm, it's safe to announce what we actually will have in the shop as well um so t-shirts vest and things like that will be available in the shop again at a higher price than they currently are on the kickstarter so if you would like to purchase them do this now recommend it because you will save some uh, money on that um also on top of that in the shop you will be able to get some exclusive tomb raider merchandise this was donated to us by murty scofield to uh, raise more funds uh, so there will be some um, lara croft statues from the classic era Brand new in a box, mint condition. Merty hoarded them, so there's quite a few of them. Not, not not many. There's about two of one kind and I think one of another kind. But again, that will be coming in the shop. So the price will be quite high on those. But you should consider the fact that we are. It, it's, yeah. it's yeah. It's it's not a shop to sell things. It's more of a shop to invest in a project. Yeah. So it's basically we we are using it as an extension of the Kickstarter. That was the check he did not pass. 
Uh, but yeah, so this shop will be an extension of Kickstarter to raise the funds. We're not making money, we're investing in the project again. Uh, now I'm reading into... Um, where are you filming this stream? I like the skylight. Thank you, this is my conservatory in my home. <laughs> yeah, that's not nothing exciting. It's in Salford, in Manchester, in my house that I bought uh, in May. So this is the big conservatory that there is. Um, Natalie just joined on Facebook. Hello, Natalie. Is Hello. this the Janice Natalie, I hope? Uh, yeah, so uh, another thing I would like to discuss is um, in, on one of the previous live streams, I said that as soon as we reach 95% of the funding, we will announce where we'll have a get together. Now we have 103% of funds, and I still didn't do that. There is a reason for it. We are trying to secure a venue in Derby that we really think will be very special. It's Mr. Grandis, the tavern where core design team members used to go uh, every lunch break and sometimes stay there till the evening and Jeremy Kip Smith will be really pissed off about that. <laughs> uh, so we tried to save uh, a space there at the end of May. Uh, I'm not getting you the actual date just yet because I don't want you guys to book the flights and then find out that we're actually doing it a day after or in a week after stuff like that. But it's going to be towards the end of May, beginning of June. Uh, we're going to go there, we're going to be in Mr. Grandis, uh, hopefully. Otherwise, we'll look into other potential venues, but we hope it's going to be Mr. Grandis because that will make it very special. There's Core Design's original building just across the road from it, so, you know, it's all nice and some bravery there. So we're still hoping to sort that out. Uh, as soon as we hear from them or we don't hear anything from them, we'll have to book somewhere else. We will let our backers know first. Oh, so Harvester can... Pride Park. Secondary venue. Yeah, Pride Park as well is where they... Uh, where, where they do that. Where they... Was, the, the, yeah, done, yeah, 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 and the Rebellion Derby, so when that's right, down course, So yeah. that's second, uh, at second venue for us as well, basically. That's where... Because Core Design was actually in two buildings originally. So it was one building that's on 55 Ashbourne Road. That's where Mr. Grandis is. And then they moved to Pride Park, where Angel of Darkness and Chronicles were made and the Anniversary Edition were made and then when they were bought by Rebellion Interactive that the, they were remaining until yeah. they yeah. were shut. And so we have two spaces in Derby potentially so we'll let you know where, when exactly but that's what we're doing essentially. That's, what, that's where the gathering is going to be. It's going to be free to attend but you have to pay for your food and drinks, whatever you want to order. Uh, you will be paying for it yourself out of your own pocket again accommodation transportation is on you but we're not charging you any money to attend uh, which we think is unless the budget goes astronomical then we'll consider yeah so if we'll say reach hundred thousand now and <laughs> then we'll definitely make it free uh, but again i don't think we can make it free for 620 people plus whoever no. else will want to attend <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so it is again, you will need to look into the transportation. Uh, Derby has, Pride Park is near, next to Derby Station, I believe. It is, yes, yeah. yeah. You pretty much walk over the bridge and you're, you're, you're pretty much in the old car, car park. Yeah. And Harvester and Old Orleans, I think that might be there, or New Orleans or whatever. It, it, it's over the over the road to that anyway. We used to use that. I've been to New Orleans, actually. Yeah, yeah, we used to use that quite quite regularly, you know. So. Which Tomb Raider game do you like the most? Tomb Raider 3. Tomb Raider 3. <laughs> I like the. I have a few favorites. Uh, my favorite one is probably Chronicles because that was my first Tomb Raider game. Um, Angel of Darkness, I also really like. Tomb Raider 4 because of Egypt. So these three are definitely yeah. in my top three. And I also like Tomb Raider 1 as well. Right. So I'm not sure whether I, I, I'll, I'll prefer Tomb Raider 3 because it was just the time I was there. I started towards the end of the development and I got to test it. And I could, you know, it, it, was a, it was a time where, you know, I, I, I was working for a company that I'd always wanted to work for. So, you know, the spirits were quite high and I got to test the game before it was released to when it was, you know, close to being finished. Well, it was probably finished, you know. So it was good to be able to kind of play something and with the with the understanding that I was going to be falling on um, in Nathan's footsteps, you know. So it was quite a good time all around. So whether, whether that's because I prefer three, I don't know, but I just like the idea of the, the different locations, you know. Um, we just got a very interesting question from Thrillium. She's on a roll, so who is rather? Have you ever had any ideas for the music concerning the cancelled Curtis Strength's solo game, which we revealed, uh, Tomb of Ash, my website, had revealed a few months ago, I believe. Um, 
so are you planning to include some some of it as in some of the music for that game in the dark angel now i know that you're making a morgau yes track that is confirmed now he promised it already last said time. it's on yeah. tip yeah so we're making morgau which is a character from angel of darkness 2 you can learn about her as well just google it morgau or the angel of darkness probably the link to our website will show up and you can read about her. We also have her available on t-shirts as well. People ask you, who is that? I'm like, well, it's the planned character. But for Curtis, we probably, we probably will make a song. I think so. It'll, I think it would be rude not to, but yeah. th regards with me, to music, I mean, I've got, obviously, there's a lot of music in three, uh, sorry, in four, five, and six. Um, and because obviously we're aiming for 60 minutes minimum, um, I need to kind of go through it all and work out you know what, what what we need in there and what we don't and if we've got you know if we've got 50, 50 uh, minutes of music that has to be done um we've got 10 minutes to play with at least so we can always always look at you know like these kind of options and you know the, it should we do them or shouldn't we do them if there's enough demand for them i don't see why not you know we should, uh, you know, we should somehow make it not happen so yeah i'm open to anything that if it's thrown at me yeah just throw all your questions maybe a soundtrack for Janice. yeah Janice. <laughs> we need a proper um, yeah we need to get uh, Nali to do some voiceover for that she is actually uh, watching <laughs> this Natalie there you go Janice yeah the Janice track we can record her dancing to it um, <laughs> that reminded me of this question about Curtis Trent uh, about the statues and pendant and um, what else do we have there uh, and concept art uh, we know that not all of them have currently been claimed on the Kickstarter but th still has some excess uh, so that excess will be available in a shop at a higher price I we need to make it clear that when we said it's going to be limited edition we said that it's going to be limited quantities we're not making more we're making it as original stated limited amount of them so but if it hadn't but if not the entire stock has been claimed through kickstarter th the rest of it will go on the shop at a higher price i think this is important to highlight to Very kickstarter cool. backers because you, as a collector myself i know how much we value limited items so just want to highlight that we're not making more of statues for the shop we're only selling the ones that were not sold on a kickstarter only so when we said it's going to be only how many we said 60 of them um sounds about right yeah i think it was about 60 uh it was spread between purchases so yeah i think it's about 47 actually now but well, when we said how we said on the kickstarter we're not making more we're just selling the excess so same as pendants same as concept art because we only have limited number of them concept art will be again delivered at random in the shop as well we're not gonna let people select the artwork they like like we didn't let you guys to do that no one is gonna get that as well so it's gonna be all fair and square we treasure our backers because they kind of made this yeah. happen uh, but yes yeah, so excess will be available on the in the shop but we're not making anything more things like cd poster and stuff like that that's not limited in quantity that's not limited edition except for the cd excluded to kickstarter the luxurious packaging cd but everything else, uh, we're only selling excess. We're not making more. We said limited edition. We're delivering limited edition. Um, sound like Theresa May there. Brexit, <laughs> <Ms>. Brexit, <laughs> delivering Brexit. Well, let's not talk about bad things. Uh, right, I'm just... Uh, Tenantin Bartos joined in on, on Facebook as well a few minutes ago. Hello. Hello. Uh, send us all your questions. Send us all your thoughts, some of your comments. We're, uh, we're getting them through and I'm going to read them out. Uh, what part of history you'd like to see Tomb Raider tackled? Surprised the game haven't had the Bermuda Triangle or Amelia Earhart. I think is that's missing Tyler, I believe. Maybe I'm really wrong. That's from Zachary again. Have Read that question again. Uh, what part of history you'd like to see to make oh, the tackle? World War Two, World War One. Mm, that's interesting. Maybe some sort of time, you know, time travel thing going on. I think it should go more into a mythological side of like Egypt or um, Greece because that's my favorite part. Say like in Horus and Seth and Tomb Raider Four. That's why I really, really love it. Um, that's why we have these here <laughs> with us today and the bus that is uh holding up the horror from herself so that's 
from the red fuel ones for World War Two. Must be interesting, like finding Nazi, Nazi gold. Yeah, yeah. I just think there's a lot. I think there's a lot of small, yeah. some interesting things in there. So that's uh, quite interesting because the anniversary edition, um, the console game, actually, we revealed the screenshot of the Natla Natla mines, I believe, the level was, and had lots of swastika images of it and, right, the, okay. and people wondering oh maybe natla is actually related to like nazi that makes sense but unfortunately later we found out that because core tried to make indiana jones game out of it <laughs> later on and it was kind of becoming greater so for us that so but um serenity are we gonna get a survey for our pendant shirt statue choices yes uh, when kickstarter ends in a couple of weeks time you will receive a survey via email and you'll be able to choose uh, which pendant you like, which shirt you like, and statue, whichever you choose. If you are using Get Checkout, you probably re you will also receive the same survey as well. So yeah, you will, uh, you'll basically receive a survey which will ask you to select which statues or pendants you want. And whichever add-on you have, or you pledge for, apologize for that sound. <laughs> whichever, like add-ons you pledge for, Jesus Christ, person, <laughs> uh, you will be able to allocate those funds to that add-on. So yeah, you will receive a survey. I'm explaining it way too complicated than it actually is. Yeah. But yeah, you will receive a survey. You will be able to claim anything. I mean, until want. until it's successful, we don't get any details. We don't get your. We don't receive any details of your address and your. Oh yeah, emails. Do we receive emails? Yes, of yes. Course. But but in, until it's successful, that's when we get everything and we send you the surveys and say it's not going to be immediate. It's going to be a few weeks because Kickstarter actually does not send us money right away. Just so you know, it takes a couple of weeks for it to go through. So once that goes through, uh, we will then start looking into this. So if you want to hear from us in a few weeks' time, don't panic. We're on it. It's just not going to be instant. But yes, you will receive a survey to allocate, just as described in our main description. Uh, are you going to discuss with Murti the Morgal track? Yeah. Uh, Morgal track, will you discuss it with Murti? Yes. Of course. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll give me a full overview of, you know. Get what, ready for it. Yeah. It'll, <laughs> he'll feed us with any inspiration. So I'm actually yeah. excited for Curtis track now. Yeah. <laughs> you promised to make a Curtis track. It's on, it's on tape, it's on tape. Uh, I've got no, babe, it's, it's live stream and I'm recording it. So, uh, on which soundtrack are you looking forward to work the most and why? That's from William. Uh, it's, it has to be Tomb Raider 5. Um, it, the, it's just the, it's the one I never finished and I want to finish it. It's like kind of starting a race and not finishing it. And I need to, okay, like kind of, I'm the type of person I like to see something from through from start to finish. So. It has to be the Tomb Raider 5 uh, main theme. Uh, which other tracks on Tomb Raider 5 you like? Um, I like the end credits music. It's oh, a bit of an one. Yeah, it's a bit <laughs> of an orchid. It's, it's kind of, that's, that's you know, it, it's, it's, it's interesting because, I mean, I do like the, the hybrid aspect of electro-orchestral music. So to put the two together, um, it, it's kind of covers, it covers a lot of ground for me, you know, and, and the type of thing I like to do. So that would be um, a really interesting track to kind of get right. Right, so we're gonna have a quick break for five minutes. Hopefully this person will stop honking this it's, fucking car. It's probably my car parked in their place. You parked outside my house, that's my <laughs> place. So we're gonna have a real quick break. Uh, you can still leave us questions, comments and stuff like that. Don't switch off. Um, or we can, I don't know, increase your pledge or pledge now as well. Uh, we are still at 62,724. We haven't moved at all during this live stream just yet. Hopefully we will. Uh, as I said before, as we said before, we are investing all the money into, but we'll be back in literally five minutes. So don't switch anywhere.
welcome back. Uh, it's me, Ash, and Peter Connolly, the composer Hello. for Tomb Raider 4, 5, and 6. We are answering your questions about Tomb Raider the Dark Angel and hopefully raising more money on our Kickstarter, which haven't haven't yet, unfortunately, yet. Uh, so I'm just going to read more questions that we received. Um, Uh, yes, yeah, so the people complaining about uh, is collaboration with Dean Copper still planned for the Angel, uh, the Dark Angel. I remember that was discussed during the previous Kickstarter. That'd be awesome. This guy is so talented. Yes, uh, we, we definitely. Um, we need to kind of arrange that and work out when we can do. You know, when I need to work out what his schedule is, and obviously we need to work out the music and what it is we can do. We need a, a de definitive list, a definitive list of the music. Um, so once we have that established, we'll kind of get in touch with Dean and we'll work something out. It's definitely happening, so uh, don't worry, it will happen. Yeah, so Dean will work with us and he already created a medley track about uh, for this, uh, for the Dark Angel, which was absolutely amazing. Fantastic, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. so, um, oh yeah, Dean will be involved, uh, at least for one track, definitely. At least, yes, yeah. Um, even, even you know, he could be used for just some recordings as well. So you know, if there's if there's a, if there's certain pieces that need some instrumentation that he could be suitable for, I'll definitely um, consider that. You know, yeah, we need to talk to Dean. We do. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Dean. You know, just putting you on the spot there. You know, but we'll. we'll, we'll he just... knows that he wants. To, he actually asked that. He does. It's yeah. Still the case. We we'll probably will invite him to your studio, and you can work a day or two together on it. Um, right. I got a question here. Zachary, and it's a good question. Uh, what was the photo taken of you that's used for Mona Lisa? God, um, <laughs> Mona Pizza. That, that I kind of re I, I remember that being um, after a all night party. I was I was a, I was crashing at someone's house after an all nighter, and I'd, I, I'm sure it was Pete Barnard to take the photo. I remember being you know in the living room on the sofa or something, and somebody kind of tapping us and waking us up, and um, kind of me kind of trying to focus, and Pete just <laughs> took that picture. Um, and then Tom Scott, um, the programmer um, on Tomb Raider 5. Um, uh, uh, during downtime, we used to kind of just mess on with photos. We stick photos of people and do silly things. They turn their eyes around, turn their lips around, and just do subtle things just to keep us entertained. And um, this photo, um, Tom Scott one day just put on top of the Mona Lisa picture. You know? <laughs> it just, and it just worked really well. I think I think the, the, the skin tone just blended well and it looked quite legit so it you know it, yeah we are 20 years on or however many years it is and it's 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 still being talked about and it was one of them photos that um i was talking to one of the um the level artists on on angel of darkness and he was working on the loop at the time and he's showing us about etc et et and they were talking about sounds or music or whatever but um i remember seeing a picture of mona lisa and i was like oh, tom scott's just did a, a version of me and he says, he was like, pretty much, please, yeah, you know, send us that now. So I went downstairs, tapped up an email, stuck that photo on, and then that's the photo that ended up being used in the game. You know, and that was. You know, when I first played Angel of Darkness and I saw Mona Pito, I didn't know that it was you, obviously. It's... I didn't actually know it was in the game until about 2011. You know, somebody actually did a screen grab of it, and I was like, oh God, they did use it, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. so I looked at it and I was like, she doesn't look like Mona Lisa much. <laughs> oh, that's maybe because of copyright issues with Louvre. No. That's what I thought it was. But then I was like, but the painting is so old that surely there is no Some copyright. Sort of, I'm yeah. not sure what the copyright implications are, but it was, yeah. it was literally just a case of being in the it right place at time. Yeah. So we probably will have mugs as one of in the shop later on as well. Uh, we'll, we'll call it out. A mug, keep... a, a mug and a mug. Yeah, a mug and a mug. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be lots of uh, merch with Mona Lisa <laughs> coming up. Because <laughs> Mona Pizza. Don't really have really... nightmares, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> She's giving wise advices on our social media, if you notice. Uh, hashtag WAMP. -A wise advice from Mona Peter, yeah. That's, <laughs> she's, she gives hilarious advice on Kickstarter. She needs to animate, she needs to kind of move her hands and do this kind of like Zelda Arena of Time kind of talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just uh, to give you a, a quick update on the Dark Angel, we um, partnered with a very amazing PR company called Little Dick PR, who done an incredible job promoting the Dark Angel across all the platforms and stuff like that. So we 
reached a lot of people during this Kickstarter, which was great. Obviously, don't think we could be able to do this without them. Definitely not. No. They actually got us an interview in, I believe it was official PlayStation magazine, um, which will be published next month. Uh, in December, uh, next month, this month, it's December yeah, it's now. Okay. For, yeah, so it's going to. Yes. I think it was on the eighteenth of December. That it's going to publish it. Uh, we will have a cover of it um, this Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, we'll publish it. So, if you want to keep it in your collection, I know that lots of Tomb Raider people like to collect the stuff related to classic Tomb Raider. We will let you know. Just stay tuned on the Dark Angel social media channels on Tuesday, Wednesday, and we will show you the cover and how to get it and stuff like that as usual but yes we got an entry in the magazine so that's great you know and we have it printed so you know it happened <laughs> in a way um yeah so feel free to send your questions and comments we are still looking out for them uh overall though peter are you happy with this kickstarter yes but, uh, there's no other way of saying it yes um i just can't wait for tomorrow to end so I can get cracking and get stuck yeah. into it. And I know that you left your job as well. I this. did, yes, yeah. Um, yeah, it was quite a big decision to make, but you know, it's it's I want my energy to be focused on the Dark Angel. Um, and I don't want to have to kind of like compromise with the time. So it, it, it was something that had to be had to be done, you know. I, I feel more passionate about this project, so it's it's you know, it was a big decision but it needed to be made. Yeah, well I think that was a wise decision. Yep. Did you listen to Mona Peter for that wise advice. I did. Mona Peter. <laughs> Peter told me yes. <laughs> or Mona Cons. Mona Cons. Cons Mona. I don't think people call you Cons that much. No, they no. Call I, you I, Mona took, Peter I took the Mona. Condo, yeah. It's yeah, it's fine. You are on Tiara as Cons though. Um, right. Uh, we also received some questions regarding interviews uh, for like fan sites and blogs. Yes, if you'd like an interview with Peter or anyone from our team. Just send us a question, uh, send us a request via contact form on the website trdarkangel.com yeah, tr or just send it directly to our press inbox, press at trdarkangel.com with all your requests. We will accommodate them. That can be anyone from our team, uh, including Ina, the artist who's probably watching us, uh, or Lara, another artist who did all these amazing um, artworks for the t-shirts, you know, signature collection and stuff like that. Um, how do you think using Richard will improve um, the soundtrack for the Dark Angel? Uh, it, it's, a diff it's a difficult one to explain. I think last live stream I made a bit of a, a botch of trying to explain this, but uh, y you know it, it's got to be understood that for Angel of Darkness we had an arranger as well. Um, th that arranger did okay. I, I, I think he could have done a lot better. Um, I think if we had a bit more time we could have improved, but Richard will hear things basically that I won't uh, or I can't, you know, I'll hear things purely from my angle, he'll hear it from an outside angle and he will he will layer the sounds, he will add some sounds, he might make the violins work better with the brass, you know, the things that I can't see, he just hears things and he knows what works and what doesn't work, I can do something and then that just won't try that that just might not translate as well as what it should do and he'll give us that advice to be able to move that he'll he'll do the counter melodies he'll hear melodies he'll extend sections you know he'll break it down he'll add he, he just he does a lot of stuff that i can't you know and it's it's probably um it's probably wise to say that, that you know all, all the all the i'm not saying i'm a top composer but all the top composers like john williams Hans zimmer um, Danny Elfman, they all have arrangers, you know. I mean, I think John Williams has two or three arrangers, you know, that he pulls in on and they all work together. So he'll come up with the original, the original draft of what he wants, and then it'll get kind of the arrangers will kind of do their magic, you know. Um, there's I can't. Uh, it's hard to describe it or, or, or use a simile to kind of other than the cake uh, making simile, you know. I, I've got the ingredients in the music. Richard bake it and you'll know, you know. But sorry, I've done it again. But yeah, he'll bring a you know, he'll he'll take it to not just the next level, but he'll take it you know, a ranger such as Richard who's got forty plus years experience will take it to such a level that, you know, it's um it'll be superb, absolutely superb, you know. I mean every soundtrack has an arranger, at least one arranger. In the Dark's hand arranger did a good job, and Richard will do a superb job. Um and you did post a video. I did post a video, yeah. yeah. And the, the the video, although it does kind of describe what you'll get out of Richard, I don't think it's enough to kind of 
show exactly what it'll do. Um, but from a, a composer point of view, somebody who's been doing this a long time, a, a, an arranger will, you know, it, it, it's, a, it, it's a second pair of ears. And he's had so much experience doing what he does that he will, you know, there'll be no limits to what he can do. Um, and he'll hear, I keep, I keep um, articulating this, but he'll hear things that I can't. You know, I think these things, I think these um, ideas that he'll bring to the table will make the difference. Yeah, I believe it will. But uh, obviously we can't, we didn't reach stage goal one. Yeah. We could be next in the next 31 hours. We could, anything yeah. happen next 31 hours. Anything could yeah. happen and also we could raise some money from the shop. Uh, and absolutely, yes. involved. But yeah. everything that we have in excess, as I said before, we're going to repeat it a few times for those who just joined us. Uh, we're going to be using all the funds uh, to improve the soundtrack. So those two and a half, two two thousand seven hundred twenty four pounds that was over the main goal will go towards involving Richard or potential Tina and Julie Alvin into one, two, three, maybe more tracks. We will basically yes, we'll we'll you we'll will well. rather not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, how many people worked on the Angel of Darkness soundtrack? Two. Um, it was me, uh, me and Martin Iverson, complete 50-50 collab. Um, it, 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 there is, it, it does know it's like that, you know, I, I, I kind of get, I get most of the credit for that, if not all the credit. Um, but to be honest, without Martin Iverson, um, it just Darkness would not be the music it is. You know, he, he, he's got a really good ear for, um, he's really got, he got a really good ear for sound and he, he, he kind of, he's very meticulous in what he does, you know, so they you know, work together. I might get to a certain point that I don't know how to get beyond. He'd come in, listen to what I've done, and he'd add his bit. I'd go into his studio. It, we, we'll, we'll just make sure each of us progressed to the next level to the point that we thought it was acceptable, you know. And um, it, it was definitely a 50 50 collab, you know. Um, Martin Iverson doesn't gain enough credit for Angel of Darkness, unfortunately, but he was 50% responsible for it. So He also drew a Santa Claus with penises <laughs> on the folder for the shit music. I have it. It's amazing. You need to post that and show I'm that. I was going to scan it, yeah, and just <laughs> like copyright Martin Everson drawing uh, the original, <laughs> the original Everson, the period of 2002. <laughs> you need like a glass of wine, you look at it and analyze. This symbolizes the uh, promiscuity of Santa. That's how he delivers his goods. He does. <laughs> He's so wrong. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and Zachary, how would you describe the atmosphere at Core Design during the Angel of Darkness development period? He is writing a story about a similar situation. It, it was, um, it didn't seem, uh, it seemed quite normal. I mean, the, the only guys, me and Martin, we were in separate rooms, um, which were soundproof. So we kind of, you know, we weren't in and amongst the, you know, the, the abundance of artists and programmers who were all kind of worked together in another room upstairs. Um, it seemed quite normal. Um, there was a lot of tension um, from time to time, um, but I, I would probably say that no more than any other project that I worked on, where you know you obviously work silly hours and everyone's getting stressed. It, you know, it, 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 it seemed quite a normal process. It wasn't until the end of the game, um, just after release, when things kind of started to die down and you know the the dynamic changed, <laughs> the crystal dynamic changed. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, pardon me. At the end of at the end of the, throughout the development of it, it, everything was quite normal, you know. Um, the, we we knew there was a lot of work that needed doing, um, and a lot of the work. I think there was a few things cut out here and there, but in general, you know, it was quite a normal process. It was just after, post release that the kind of dynamic of core design um, was a little bit kind of. Um, and everybody's better on show about what was happening, you know, it was quite a, a bizarre time, but... But, yeah, uh, let's stick with Angel of Darkness. What's your, what's the track that you're looking forward to work on the most? Surrounded by Green. Surrounded by Green. That's not going to be in the Dark Angel, unfortunately. <laughs> no, it's not. No. The, mu the, the, the music from... Um, Serpent Rouge, that, that will be there, but obviously I'll not be using any of the, 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 the vocals that I used on a kind of like, on a remix track, but yeah, um, I'm not, it Dance the Looks by Retardus. Um, I, hear, I was waiting for that, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I hear that, and um, <laughs> even when I was doing the MIDI mock-ups the other day, I was just thinking, that's such a mess. I mean, it's big, it's huge, it's got some excellent brass in there, there's some excellent elements, but a lot of it is wrong. 
Um, and I think um, people who play the game don't hear them issues. So um, it, it, it's one I want to get right. It, it should be a lot different. Um, I think people like that it looks ripped up this quite a lot. I, I do, I find that. Like I find if lot, you do. Yeah, I find, I find, <laughs> like a, lot, I find a lot of people mention that it's one of the, it's one of the nicest tracks, but it's, I don't know, it, 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 I should say for what it is, but it's not without its problems. I, you know, the, the main problem I had with that was the, the percussion, and this goes across the board on all the music, the percussion was really um, wrong, and then it was recorded on too high. I mean, if you listen to a lot of the tracks on Angel Darkness, you'll find that the percussion is just quite domineering. What we should have ideally done was record the percussion separate and then mix it together, but because it was all played at once, and we were stuck for time, you know, we, we didn't have that time or luxury to do stuff like that, so... You know, there's a lot. There's a lot of compromises in some of the tracks. You know, we might have had two or three takes, and we just had to move on to the next one because we were pushed for time. Um, so yeah, looks of dance of the looks very tight. This is one I really know. It, it's it's going to be the one I'm going to get really stuck into to get right. Yeah, well, now you can because you quit the job. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, in terms of, um, I think I'm on the pill for something, but I completely forgot what I wanted to ask. Um, in terms of um, remastered tracks for six, five, and four, for uh, six yeah. rather, um, we spoke about it on the li last live stream. But just in case for people who didn't watch it, um, can you tell us what what is a remaster compared to a rearranged Dark Angel? Yes, thing? a remaster will take the original music, clean it up. You know, make it uh, make it sound. Just it's like giving it a lick of paint. It will be the act actual music. All we'll be doing is just making it sound better. Um, in terms of like it, it would sound better on a high fi or in someone's car. You know, if for example, um, the version that is in the game sounds a little bit too subby in in a car, a little bit too bassy. It'll just be refined, so it it kind of works across the board. Um, that's the general kind of understanding of what a, a, a remaster is. Um, but a reimagined, we kind of start from the bottom, from the ground up. We basically we do the music, you know, start off with Dance Looks Very Tired, for example. We'll be do, 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 do. and then we'll, you know, we'll add that, we'll extend that, we'll add other stuff on top of that. Richard will do his thing. Um, so it'll be completely um, redone, it'll just be revised. Um, it'll, you'll know that it stands to the looks of our tartars, but you'll be elements in there that you know it's different. It's not, you know, it's like there might be a bit more of a build up, or there might be um, bigger, big, bigger sections. You know, it's it's not the original music with a bit of spice added. It's it's basically redone from the start. It's like taking a car apart and rebuilding it, opposed to giving it like a paint and then it look uh, tidier. How much? This is going to be a question where you have to blow on your own horn, which you don't like to do, but still. <laughs> How much do you think you have grown as a musician since the Angel of Darkness? Oh, it, well, it's been 15 years. Um, Jesus Christ, 15 years. 15 years, I know. Um, I wasn't even 60, born. It would, it would be 16, 17 years from a writing point of view, because we actually recorded Angel of Darkness in 2002. Um, but how I've grown since, as a composer, I think you know you never you never get to a point where you, you know it all. It, it you, you think you do with the time, you know you think you you can only work within the realms of what you know, and you think you can do you, you can take on the world, you know you can do it how you want to. But you know, I think it's a progressive thing. Um, I like to think I'm fifteen years better than what I was, um, and, and a lot of the technology has changed in these fifteen years as well. So there's no reason why we can't bring this new technology into the workflow. Um, I, I've, I've also had 15 to 20 years as well, if we go back to Tomb Raider 4 as well. I've, all, I've, all, I've had that time as well of, of hearing the music over and over and knowing what can be improved, what works, what doesn't work, um, what could be added to help the bits that don't work and what could be done overall to improve it. So um, I think my attention to detail is, is, is if anything, is increased quite a bit. Um, I, I'm a bit more meticulous about how the music could sound. Um, but I'll probably say the same thing, same thing in 15, 20 years time as well from now, you know. It's, it's just a progressive thing. You just kind of, you learn new things every day. You know, you, you do stuff and you think, oh, that would be great. That would be great to be able to do what I did to that, to that. So you kind of take that 
learning curve with you. Um, it's progressive. It's this, you know, there's also something new to bring to the table. And I think uh, with what I did 15 to 20 years ago, I think um, it, it's going to be ex exponentially improved. So, you know, um, I'm confident it's going to sound <laughs> a lot better. Uh, is Martin, that's from Thrillum as well, uh, is Martin Iverson going to be Iverson, rather? Iverson, yeah. Uh, it will be, or oh, oh, Martini, Martini, as you call him. <laughs> uh, is Martini going to be involved in this in any way, in the Dark uh, in the, the Dark Angel Symphony? De definitely. I mean, obviously, he, he uh, the, the writing of um, Angel Darkness is 50-50, so I'm going to, with them tracks in particular, I want to try, you know, I want his input in that. Um... He'll not be doing a lot of the, the the writing, but he will be saying, you know, this bit should have sounded like this or sounded like that, and it would be. And I would probably pass each track to him and say, what do you think, you know? And you know, I would get his definitely definitely get his, his musical yes. opinion on things. Um, but you'll not be as uh, you'll not be as involved in the production is is what I would be. I'll I'll do my thing. I'll get to a point. I think to say the more like I did when we're doing Interdance. I'll say, what do you think of this? You know, how could I improve this? He'll say, yeah, and yeah, you know, and and give us some opinion, constructive advice about how to take it to the next level because you there will be a lot of points even in the music i've already written there will be a lot of points where i'll hit hit that uh, hit that wall where i'll just not know how to take how to forward from there so he will be there to kind of help keep it flowing you know uh, in, uh that's a good question that i received um we received it a few times actually on the social media and, and i think we need to highlight it um flack and lossless yes Will that be available? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's 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 in my old CD to to, to give it lossless, you know. Um, it it'd be uh, it'd be a sh it seems to be the done thing, you know. And it, there's no reason why this album should be different. It's um it's going to be presented in many formats, MP3, MP4, whatever, you know. We need to decide that, but it definitely will be available in some sort of lossless. We format. will. We will try to get it onto. We will, we, will, we will not try. We will get it onto Spotify. Yes. Google Play Music. Um, and all the major ones for in a normal quality, obviously because these services don't support lossless as of yet, but they will soon. Uh, on on our shop though, on our website, you will be able to purchase lossless and download it from there. Yes. So that will be able to you. Um, the comment from Envy Go on Periscope. We think this is an absolutely brilliant idea. We can't wait to hear it. Uh, I think this is about Martin being involved, not you. No pressure, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, overall, though, how, like in Tomb Raider 4, for example, uh, which track you think you could do much better and it will be done better in the Dark Angel Symphony? I've got two tracks that are kind of I think are going to go, going to be my first go tos. Um, the theme tune, if there's just not enough substance in my opinion, there's not enough substance in there. I could make it a lot bigger, uh, more dynamic. Um, it's it's definitely what I want to get I want to get stuck into as soon as possible. Um, Jeep thrills. And Jeep thrills. Yeah, that, that's, that's funny. <laughs> that that was a kind of last minute thought when I wrote that. It was just I've got to have something in there like that. Um, and for some reason, I called it Jeep thrills uh, just as a kind of you know, placeholder whilst I was working, saving things, and you know, it's it's known as Jeep Thrills. Um, so yeah, that's another one I want to get into. Um, I, I just know I can transform that one into something a, a lot bigger, and you know, bring it up to date. And I, I, I'm quite excited about working that one as well. Uh, Fiona is asking, will the sound? I, I can answer that one. Uh, will the soundtrack be available on Amazon UK? We are aiming to uh, put it on all the major ones, so Spotify, Google Play, iTunes. That's definitely Amazon. Can't say yet because we haven't looked into Amazon specifically, but uh, as in digital Amazon, as as the CD itself, I don't think so because we have our own shop. Why would you buy with Amazon? Uh, we will use Stripe, which is Amazon payments essentially, as in the system that Amazon uses. So uh, can't say just now whether it will be digitally available on amazon because we will have it everywhere else yeah. so i mean the main aim is to have it available as many places we can so. if there's something we can't viably do then we, we, you know we'll look at ways of conquering that and if we can't conquer it and we hit a brick wall that'll be it but we do you know we do want to restrict our um exposure of, this, of, of the music so we will try our hardest to get it you know heard everywhere yeah but it's not confirmed 
Yeah, just so you know. <laughs> Possibly, but if not, don't be pissed off on that. Uh, in terms of the same question about uh, that, actually, no, you did answer the Tomb Raider 5. Um, in terms of the new tracks, you know, you have Morgal track, you have Curtis Trent tracks that you said you can do potentially Janice track now. Is there any particular one that you think you already know how it's going to sound? I, I, no, I, I mean, I, not necessarily, no. I mean, I do have a couple of ideas flying about in my head, but obviously, um, the, the, the the Curtis one that needs to be dark. It needs to have some sort of, you know, it needs to, it needs to portray the fact that, you know, Curtis, who Curtis is. So it needs to be quite... That guy over there. That guy there, yeah. <laughs> it, it needs to, yeah, it, it, it needs to be quite hard and heavy. Um, Ooh, like rock guitars and songs. Possibly, guitar. yeah. Oh, that yeah. would be amazing. So though. again, you've got your hybrid orchestra. Bon Jovi good, style. Yeah. yeah, go for it. So um, <laughs> so it, it'll be, you know, yeah, Curtis, I can, can see that needs to be quite triumphant, you know, big, um, complex. Um, you should hiss. Um, I, I've got some ideas, but I can't quite articulate the ideas I have at the moment. Um, with regards to the... Yeah, and the, the what's the third one you mentioned? Morgau. Morgau, yeah. yeah. Um, I need to speak to Murdy on that one. Um, it's in the post. I'll get back to you on that. I'm sure they will, Murdy will pester you. For he will. Now. And he you will. promise that you're going to make one. Yeah, I will. The NVGov that uh, said some good things for us on Periscope earlier said that they're an orchestra that was set up primarily to perform video game music. So they would love they love hearing about new video game music projects. That's interesting because we. We were in talk with a couple of orchestras in America to uh, potentially is, uh, is sell rights the right word for it, uh, to set it up so they could potentially perform a song or two or more in, as part of their show. Uh, so watch the space. Um, um, so, you know, that will happen. That, that will, will happen, happen yes. hopefully. Yeah. Uh, again, this is not only our say here. It's also things like Screenix and legal and how much they will charge for using the the IP for, yeah, for the exactly, orchestra. Exactly, yeah. So you know we can't we, we can't just say yeah. There's a lot yeah, of eyes yeah. and a lot of t yeah. a lot of eyes to dot and a lot of t's across before we can do that. But it's definitely something we want to, um, to look into. And you know the, the the opportunity is there, and we have the right people to speak to. We just need to make sure it's all yeah. open above board. So so a lot of questions like you know early on in Kickstarter campaign or during Kickstarter campaign or even now. There's a lot of time people ask those questions and say, can't answer that. There's a lot of things you must understand. There's a lot of background things yeah. happening. Things like, well, you know, when people say, oh, you should have postponed it, uh, the, 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 the reveal of the Kickstarter because, you know, there's a new game out or you should have done it earlier or later. That was not up to us again. We, our original plan was February uh 2018 we, that's when, yeah, yeah that's when we wanted yeah, to reveal yeah. it that's all you had a countdown going on but unfortunately the reasons were not the things were out of our control and we were pushed to reveal it later on so you know there's a lot of things to consider here it's not just us saying yeah let's do it let's just do it on that day or yeah let's have that orchestra involved and perform it so much league yeah. so much uh, uh, there's so much um Very background work to, yeah. to make this happen i mean we've, we've worked we slugged our guts out for the last few years to kind of get the particulars about this you know so we haven't it's not like we haven't looked into into every possibility we have we've looked you know we've got the, the, this was this practical this this won't happen we need to do this we need to get this verified we need to get this action i mean a lot of works went on behind the scenes um we haven't just turned up one day and thought let's do a kickstarter bang you know yeah it, it's been really well looked into so so yeah there is a lot of work and we really want to bring it to everywhere possible all orchids are performing it all around the world but not up to us all of it just to say can we we say yes, you can, but there is lots of other things to consider as well. So, there is, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, the Kickstarter just went not in terms of money, but we are now on thirty hours uh, <laughs> till finish. It. So you know, final countdown, thirty hours to go. So pledge, increase pledge. Please don't decrease because we are using the money. I think we're close, too close to the bone now of going under. So yeah. really, ideally, yeah. If it goes under sixty k, it's not going to money is not going to happen. Even though we received an email confirmation that's been funded, if we go under sixty k, 
it's not going to happen. So yeah, and I, there'll not be a third attempt. You know, if it go, if it fails, it fails. That's it. You know, it's um, I think I think we've had more chances to make it happen. And if it does pass, well, I think um, the doors will open. And there'll, there'll be all the orchestral things. You know, the shop, this, that, and the other. I think it's a start of something great. You know, so it it you know we need it, we need it to be sixty or above um, for things to happen. If it goes under, game over. That's it. Uh, Jonathan Van den Stad just joined on Facebook. Hi, Jonathan. Hey, how are you, bud? Um, Jennifer is asking, our Jennifer, uh, what about track for Futai and L- Luther Rosic? Well, Futai, um, I think Futai had a the, uh, it, yeah, there was well, what it was, it was a, it was a, uh, a mixture of two tracks which are welded together. Um, but what I want to do now is use that is to reimagine that as one track. And get Richard or myself to arrange it so it will be obviously different, better, and more appropriate to Puta, you know. So uh, there will definitely be a theme um, for, for her. So. Uh, the MV Gov, where was the music recorded? Has it been recorded yet? Where was, will be, we should we talk about a project that the conservatives across the UK? The music has not been recorded yet. This is what the Kickstarter is for. Uh, but yeah, we are in talks with everyone possible, so we are trying. <laughs> yeah, if we hit 180,000, yeah. um, it's always possible, 30 hours to go, it's possible. Um, Shop. It, yeah, exactly, yeah. We the, we do plan on recording an 82 piece, piece orchestra at Elendhurst, um, and we currently have the um, the two days that's required to do this, pencil in for the 1st and 2nd of April. So, you know, it's it's... There's that potential there, um, but with regards to writing it, nothing's been done yet because we need the funding to be able to do what we want to do. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I need to do it. Richard needs to do it. So obviously that money goes towards um, making it happen. Otherwise, you know, all all that will be available is the original original pieces which came with four, five, and six, um, which you know at the moment is just kind of like there, there, here and there on the internet can download it but obviously it'll not be remastered so it won't sound as it will sound um it'll be tightened it'll sound crystal clear you know it'll yeah we need the money to be able to do you know the dark angel three times the money we currently have for yes for it. but uh we actually were talking about it just before we went live um you never know maybe if this sells in after sales really well we can always start another campaign to have a concert on. yes uh, so yeah. you never know that so let's just make sure we get as much money as possible right now to see to get, what the, music we can, to yeah. get the music written to get the music arranged properly with richard Niles and stuff like that so obviously even if it's just you it'd still be arranged properly but, yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not doing a bad job if it's just me i'm not doing a bad job it'll still be he says blood is on trumpet uh i'll still make sure it's you know it's it's of of quality it'll definitely be better than what was released before but it would be nice to have that second set of ears to be able to kind of put the things in that i can't or i can't hear you know it's it's just it's just how it is you know richard's got that 40 years of experience and i can't stress enough how important it is to have him in this project the whole my whole idea was based around richard niles so you know it'll be a shame for him not to be involved in any shape or form so uh, the um, the song you keep telling me about "Left to My Own Devices" by Pet Shop Boys that Richard did. Uh, if you listen to it now, you can definitely hear the main theme of Angel Darkness in that, like the, some of it, not not all of it. Obviously, uh, the, uh, yeah, the orchestra, the, the orchestration art is is pretty much you know how how I expected the tune the music to go. Um, it, if if it wasn't for that, the orchestration and the arrangement of left to mind devices i probably wouldn't be doing what i'm doing now i probably would have been sitting here now and i listen to that music and i just think it's so meticulous i love the way the the strings kind of they don't just go from one note to the next they kind of move to the next note and then you've got the instru- different instruments kind of the, it, it, the whole orchestra is communicating and you know the, there's um it, it's it's just really meticulously done and, I, and if i was asked to do left to mind devices i would do a good job of it but i just wouldn't sound the same as what Richard could do, you know. It's hard to try and it's hard to sell Richard on this because it because you know if you don't hear what he's done, then you can't kind of understand what it is he can bring to the table. So yeah, um, if it wasn't for, I mean, that's what sparked the whole interest of where I'm with Richard now with my devices. Um, but over time, I've learned he's worked on a lot more um, 
music and a lot of music I grew up with and a lot of music that I loved, you know. Um, an example, Sun the Seeds of Love by Tears of Fears, you listen to the orchestra, the background, the arrangement of the whole track, that's Richard Niles. Um, he's worked with Take That, he's worked with um, Trevor Horn, who, um, the man who invented the 80s, you know. Um, he's done a lot with her, Grace Jones, Slave to the Rhythm, you know. He, he's got, if, if you Google Richard Niles, he's got a website, he's, uh, you know, it's... Um, Vicky Page. On Wikipedia. Yes, Wikipedia, and, and you can see what he's worked on, and it's just uh, you know I keep say, I keep hearing tracks and, and find out that he's worked on them, and thinking, wow, I didn't know that, you know. So he just even now he's still constantly wowing me, you know. He, he's a big player on this, and um, I think it would be a sin not to not to have him involved in well, some we'll shape or form for a song or two, maybe. We will definitely at least yes. at the very least. Um, that brings me to a question about uh, music in general, like inspiration for music and stuff like that. So can you tell me what inspired you for that, what inspired you for that, and what inspired you for that? Um, I mean, this is my first two movies. I, I did, um, I, I started working for Core in September 98, um, not long before Tomb Raider 3 was out, and towards the end of Tomb Raider 3 I did, I played a lot of the, well, I played a lot of the game, I tested a lot of the game, and I noticed there was no music in the last boss level. So I wrote a track for that. Um, but it was too late to be able to um, get that in the build. Um, so I kind of saved it for Tomb Raider 4. Um, obviously, it's Egyptian, it's, it's Egyptian based. And it, so I needed to keep the authenticity of Tomb Raider going um, with it being my first Tomb Raider project. Um, Obviously, I needed just uh, to have that Egyptian theme going on in there. So I listened to a lot of soundtracks. So I was listening to the Mummy, and there was a lot of inspiration in there to kind of like help it, help keep us on track. Um, but it was also just the buzz of working on on a game such as this. You know, I mean, it's something I've been wishing for for a long time to be working on uh, such a big game. So and I, I got a lot of the early builds of the levels. You know, something. I mean. What, what was released there might be kind of 20 or 30 different places you can visit but I kind of saw the levels at a very primitive level so it would be just one room which would be the next day or the next week there might be two rooms you know so I kind of I was playing them running about just get a bit of inspiration and then just putting your hands on the keyboard and just let's see what come out you know anything that I found that suited or worked with what I was seeing would be what I would um, would take to the next level and develop and produce um before we move on to that there was a question previously about using traditional egyptian instruments for some of the tracks yes so yes um it, it would be silly to not include um uh, any kind of traditional um egyptian instruments so there'll be a lot of ethnic instruments used in um these tracks mostly obviously that's revelation but where, where needed it will be included it will be kind of added in there i think that'd be quite cool because if everything's done from the studio um but there will be, obviously this extra funding will allow us to look at ways of better ways of spending the money i'd much rather have a live player come in than try and take a week two weeks to get a simple melody to sound authentic so i think some live um ethnic players will be involved with the production um uh, before you go yeah I know you're eager to talk about your favorite one. Uh, Florian Huber just pledged 128 pounds for limited edition Angel of Darkness artwork, and that Thank pushed you. us to 104 percent of the funds. Wow! So that's 621 backers so far. Chronicles. Chronicles. Um. Chronicles was pretty much uh, there. Were, there were some new pieces in this, but the, the, a lot of the pieces were taken from. Um, Tomb Raider 4 was pretty much a kind of continuation and with a lot of the levels being themed you know you're looking at you know going uh, well being Chronicles of Lara a lot of it was based in Egypt so I did continue some of the themes over um, but although there was not a lot of music in there a lot of the, like you know the music tracks as compared to Last Revelation a lot of the music um, was in the cutscenes and the FMVs, which I used as well. Um, again, it wasn't just the music I was involved with, with, with these games. It was the FMVs, it was the sound effects, uh, it was the animation. So I was tying the sounds, the sounds to the animation. I was testing the game. I was also sorting the um, the, the um, 
localization now. So I'll do the English, French, German, Spanish, Italian, you know, in Japanese. It was all, it, it was a one man, it, it, it was a one man job, but it should have been a two or three man job. So uh, with regards to influences, I would probably say the influences were just kind of come off the back of him, uh, the last revelation. What um, about things like, is there a specific mood that you were in that inspires specific tracks? Kind of, yeah, it, it does. I mean, I think it, it, if I've been in a different mood on a day I'd wrote a certain track, it might be a different track, you know, it all, all, all depends. I mean, I am the type of person that likes to look at the visuals. I like to kind of play around the levels and then let, let my hands do the talking. So yeah, you know, obviously you, a lot of it is looking back on Lara, so it's quite somber. And I'm, I do like writing kind of like kind of somber music, you know, a lot of music he has quite, not negative, but it's, it's in a kind of a, a minor rather than a major. Um, so yeah, the, the frame of mind, I mean, I do kind of pull on my emotions when I, when, I, when, I, when I was playing this. I knew it was looking back a lot on what Laura had been up to, so I was kind of trying to evoke that emotion. Mm -hmm. Now, Angel of Darkness, the main theme of Angel of Darkness, the one that broke me down oh my god it's just i'm gonna make that happen again ah we, we, we were at play expo that's just for those who didn't who couldn't make it it was a play expo and we had a core design panel um at the main stage on saturday and we put cross confession which is a thing that we ran previously where people could send how these games influence their uh, not just these get ultimate games influence themselves you know and their lives because obviously 20 years and stuff like that and people were sending various like messages you know uh, someone came up uh, someone realized that they're actually a woman in that man's body so they tr transitions and stuff like that so there are lots of influences there for me personally i moved countries you know and learned english and stuff like that uh, it saved my done. life even at some point uh, but it's all written in my blog at some point i don't want to go into details on that and so we made all these slide shows and we were filming we thought you know people are going to get emotional we're going to film them the music is going to get sadder because it started from one two and three music then goes to four which is very kind of tragic kind of mood to it to my five and six so we were here filming people and then to where this four kicks in and i'm like like holding you know no 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 what what is happening i made this video this can't be happening so what is this you know and obviously after these tracks the core design will take the stage you know so they're thinking oh you know they're gonna be on stage for the first time they're gonna meet the fan the angel of darkness kicks in and that's it <laughs> boom streams of that and that is not a very pretty thing to see you know it's, it's available on it's available as well if you google it it's not, though. It's I, not. I, I didn't pu publish the video that was cut out. I did publish a picture still of it, and people were like, what had happened? Did something went wrong? <laughs> 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 oh that was awful it's oh, just, I love it. it's not a pretty thing it's to strange do. though it, it's really weird because obviously i wrote the music and done whatever I've done and then for to actually affect somebody in that way it, it kind of means a lot to a composer because that's what you're, you know, you you want to evoke emotion you want to you want to give somebody something a feeling that is representative of what you're doing and um that i was i was um i loved it. i, I, I I know, I know, it, it got very emotional, but it, it was kind of great, you know, because it, it, it's doing something, you know, and that's what you want. I'm going to gonna carry on with that story because it's very funny. Uh, I was like, I received a message from Jay, who's probably watching us. Hi, Jay, who helped us quite a lot with this. Um, Jane Laurie, uh, who recently had a child, Alex. Hello, Alex. Uh, so, Bubs. He's there, yeah, Bubs. He sent me a sex. Is there anything okay? I'm like, yes, I'm fine. You know, and I realized, you know, I'm in troubleshooting mode here. You know, <coughs> how do I get away? I can't stop this. Like, someone opened the tap. Like, you can hear probably now we have a rain, so we can hear the rain. Um, Sounded a bit like How that, do yeah. I? Oh my God, I know. April, my friend April, who is an emotional mess always. <laughs> she's on the first row so if i'm crying my eyes out april is probably there you know like swimming in the pool of tears i was sitting behind her so yeah i was like okay i'm gonna go find april and gonna stand next to her so i don't look as ridiculous so I'm going there and april just sits there watching the slideshow i'm like you're fucking mad i'm here crying 
it's, it's, it was very funny. It was hilarious. Um, <laughs> I have that on video. I'm gonna post the post video. It, please, I'm yes. gonna post it later on when we when you actually work on that main theme. I will compare it in the video. Uh, DJ Fool. Um, Guys, just one word. I'm glad you made it. I know you're waiting for it 10 years or, or longer. 15 years now. <laughs> just yeah. waiting for it. So thanks for the kind words there. Simon is asking. Um, just a good question. He's look, uh, We answered this question earlier, but Simon only just joined. Um, he's looking at pledging £150 plus a t-shirt. Um, will there be a chance for future to set to get the Lara statue or Angel of Darkness artwork because he's thinking it's close to Christmas and how much he can afford? Um, so, um, as I said earlier, just before, I'm gonna repeat it since people just joined. Uh, everything that doesn't sell on Kickstarter that includes statues and pendants and artworks, the concept artworks, everything that doesn't sell. All the quantities that don't sell will be available in a shop a few weeks later on, but at a much higher price. And first come, first served. First come, first served. We're not making more statues. Even if they sold out completely, we're not going to make 10 more. No, that's not going to happen. We said limited edition. I think we said 60 of them will be made. So only 60 of them will be made. Same with pendants. Uh, obviously, concept artwork, there, there's only so much of them. So yeah. they will be available in the shop at a higher price. Kickstarter backers will get 10% discount, but it will still be more than it's currently on, on the Kickstarter. So if you want them cheaper, get them now here. You can pledge a few times uh, if you use guest checkout or create second account. It will let you do that on the same card. It will let you pledge. I've noticed a few pledges uh, using the same name but got different accounts so yeah it's, so it's... yeah you can use the same card by all means uh but it will be more expensive in the shop than it is on kickstarter so make sure you do that but yes everything that doesn't sell will be available all the quantities will be excess quantities rather will be available in kickstarter we're not making more pendants we're not making more statues they're as limited as they currently are we're just selling whatever hasn't sold yet um, will there be any behind the scenes documentary for this project? Uh, yes, there will be. Uh, however, we originally planned when we reach 180,000 pounds, we plan to use uh, a specific videographer for it, Tatiana, who has an amazing experience, amazing equipment and stuff like that. So she was supposed to work on this uh, and some money from that 180,000 would go towards making that happen. Unfortunately, though, we, well, we still might in 30 hours reach you never, UK, know. you never know. Uh, but if we don't, we will have to use someone else on a cheaper rate. And um, we found someone. Uh, so yes, there will be documentary and we will need to speak to, uh, to the videographer. There will be a behind the scenes documentary uh, available for free, good to know. Uh, it will be probably bundled with the Angel of Darkness DVD and also available on the internet as well, on YouTube and stuff like that. But yes, we will make it documented. Hopefully we'll reach 180k so we can have Tatiana involved in this because we really, really want her there. But it doesn't. if it doesn't happen, all you need to know, the documentary will happen one way or another. So yes, yes yeah. there will be. Uh, so keep pledging, hopefully. Um, you haven't answered what was the inspiration for that. Yes, um, it's it's it's. I mean, it's, it's common knowledge that the the music from Angel of Darkness is pretty much, you know, the basis of it anyway is from um, the, the Last Revelation. Both theme tunes are. Uh, it's probably a good example to make what an arranger can do. Um, if you compare that music, which is the same music as the theme tune on that, but obviously it's been rearranged, re reimagined. Um, uh, so you know it, there's a lot of like follow-on from that from this um, but obviously with regards to inspiration again just listen to a lot of um, orchestral music you know a lot of or dark orchestral music and you obviously have to fit the, the story as well so obviously you know it's just yeah, you, you know how things start off at the beginning. You know, there's this uncertainty about what's going on with Laura and and their kind of actions. So the music needs to reflect that. Um, and I think I think we kind of nailed that. Um, 
you know, it kind of, I, I, I haven't played the game a lot, not as a lot as, like, I obviously finished it a million times over. I've kind of, I, I kind of have a rule of not playing any games I've worked on. Um, Why? It's not only because you're too close to it and you know what you know the whole process, you know what goes on. No, I don't. So think it's, that's you don't true. get that kind. Of, you, you know, I don't think that's the truth. He is very self-critical, so he hates listening to his own music. I do. Yeah, I've got to admit that uh, <laughs> as much as people love the Angel of Darkness music, I'm not blowing my own trumpet yet because I'm about to put my hand in the in the, in the trumpet bell. But <laughs> um, I, I, it took me a long time to get over Angel of Darkness. It was um, it was quite intense. You know, it was a lot of lot, lot of hours. Um, and there was a lot of work involved, you know. Um, and I know, obviously, the reason why I'm doing Dark Angel Symphony now is because I knew there was a lot of errors in the original um, arrangement. Um, we had, like, literally two, three-hour sessions to get all the music done. Um, and to get the LSO at Abbey Road to do that, it's it's a lot of music. I think it was, like, 40 or 50 minutes of music. Um, recorded in that time and I think you know I, I should really give myself a pat on the back but I kind of I, rather than focus on the positive I look at the negative and think it negative and think you know is, 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 I can hear the mistakes and every time I hear the mistake it gets louder and louder and louder and yeah Ash was probably right you know it's it's why I tend not to play games before because I know if something isn't right then it kind of like it hurts <laughs> so um, with the Dog Angel Symphony I want to remedy you know all the kind of errors that I've, I've, I know that are in there um, and just just make it how I want it to, to be made you know um, and with the time on our side this time where it wasn't the first time around you know um, I'm probably waffling on. <laughs> you do. But it's fine. We we'll love it. Uh, Eva Svobodova asks, what happens if I don't have enough money in my bank account at the end of the Kickstarter campaign? Will I have some time to send the money later or is my pledge going to be automatically cancelled? Um, that's a good question because good Kickstarter question. has changed uh, the rules recently uh, about that. I believe you get a seven-day uh, window to ensure you have the um, funds in your account so you're not charged right away but as, as I believe that that's how it works you have a seven day window to put money into your bank however to be safe what I would suggest to call your bank today or tomorrow whether, uh, whatever and ask them tomorrow is probably best because tomorrow it ends uh, ask them to give you an arranged overdraft so with the range overdraft, you are not charged uh, like ridiculous amount, like twenty pounds a day or something. I thought this might be wrong, but I, I thought if you pledge something now, although it doesn't come off your account, it's reserved on your account. No, it doesn't reserve the full amount. It's ah, a certain amount. Okay. So no, it doesn't do that. So you actually have more money in your bank because some of the, the money you pledged is reserved by Kickstarter. But what I would suggest personally is to uh, go to your bank and ask for arranged overdraft. Uh, when you go into that arranged overdraft, you are charged, I think, in UK at least, you're charged about 50p a day on Monzo card. And um, after like £10, if you charge more than £10, you're not charged more than £10 basically for the whole month. So uh, that's how arranged overdraft works. So I would suggest go to your bank and ask for arranged overdraft of 100 or £200, whichever you pledged for. I think that's that would be a safer option. Um, just to ensure you have that and that by the way going into arranged overdraft does not affect your credit score so if you would like to get a credit card later on or uh, get a mortgage for the house that does not count if you went to the arranged overdraft it will count if you go into overdraft but not into arranged so not that's what that, deal. Not, not a big deal you'll be charged like a pound a day or 50p a day uh, for 20 days that's it uh, that would so i would recommend asking your bank to give you what whatever you need for this um but i do believe that you have seven day window for the kickstarter uh for the kickstarter we need to verify that yeah we need to verify that um one second uh some oh the, this is from from the kickstarter if your project you're back in is successfully funded your card will be charged when the project reached its funding deadline 
they, uh, so I was wrong. <laughs> if your project does not reach its funding goal, your card never charged. Some backers may see a temporary authorization of funds at the time of pledging before project has been successfully funded. So that's when it's reserved the funds. Yeah, it, what, what happens, because I noticed that on my um, credit card with previous Kickstarters, what happens is you'll see, a, 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 it, it's always penned in transactions, but it, you can see the amount and then the amount um, reversed. So you, you know that, I think it just checks that your card can afford it basically, so. Uh, so yeah, so the safer option here would be for you to call the bank and ask for range overdraft. Yeah. What most likely will happen if you don't have enough money, I don't think your pledge will be canceled. I think you will go into overdraft with your bank. You don't want to do that. So go and call yeah. and make sure you have a range overdraft. So most of the banks have 24 hour phone line. So you should be able to call them today, if not, first thing tomorrow morning, call them and ask for a range of overdraft. Or you can actually apply online in multiple yeah, yeah, banks so as well. Was, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Eva, don't go into overdraft for us. Do the arranged uh, thing. Uh, and yes, uh, but I do believe it does have a um, seven day period when the Kickstarter starts charging. I think it is within seven days, but it could yeah. be instant. It depends on your bank. Again, uh, on the authorization, it also depends on your bank as well. I'm reading here in the Kickstarter rules. So basically that when it reserves the funds, it depends on your bank. It could be still be reserved. It could be released after a few days. So you could have more money. It, could be more. it depends on your bank. We can't say for certain, uh, but check with your bank. So get that arranged over draft, even for the future, you know, even when you make purchases online, you still have this cushion of safety. So. Uh, make sure you don't go in overdraft for us uh, because well, that's not worth that no, no, credit no, no. for. Again, with with the, with the overdraft as well, you have twenty four hours to top up or call your bank and ask for range overdraft as well. So even if you go into overdraft, unarranged overdraft, um, with your bank, you normally have twenty four hours to make it right, basically. So call your bank and sort it out. So don't go into overdraft don't don't leave it like that um sorry if it's not very clear what we said no, no, it's, yeah, it's far. It's, okay, it, yeah it all depends on your bank really so we can't really guarantee that uh right the date when kickstarter attempt to collect your pledge uh so uh right okay Ooh, okay right Okay, so yeah, that's some kicks out and those there. Sorry about that, but I was trying to clarify. It's not very clear. It all depends on your bank, how it's all sorted. So call your bank, ask for range overdraft. That's all you need to do. A couple of hundred pounds or whichever currency you use and uh, just make sure it covers all the funds. So you don't go into unarranged overdraft, which will charge you much more and might affect your credit score. So do that. Um, uh, yeah, so it's not very clear on Kickstarter how it works, unfortunately. I knew it's not going to be very clear, uh, but it depends per bank. Now, uh, in the Dark Angel Symphony, how many CDs are we looking at? In the, minus the remasters. Okay, let's think about this. Um, I would say one or two. It depends. I mean, 60 minutes of audio will fit onto one CD. Um, but... I'm, I'm imagining with the budget we are now, probably one CD and then obviously two or three CDs for the um, for the the, the the remasters. Yeah, so, the, so it'll, be, it'll be it'll be three or four, maybe it's five. It all depends on what we can do. I think it will be four at least because Angel of Darkness is definitely one CD. Yes. Chronicles possibly will be one. Chron CD. Yeah, Chronicles and uh, when I went through the music of the Chronicles and the Last Revelation tenth, okay, there's a lot of yeah. shared shared audio in there. So uh, you know, I need to kind of work out what tracks we need to reimagine. Um, but we, I imagine it'll be at least one, um, possibly two. Um, but we were known we won't know that until it's done and how much we've got to spend on, on on, on making the music. So yeah. Um... We, you saw our exclusive packaging, you see it can fit uh, four CDs guaranteed. We can actually fit more than that because the center one where the artwork booklet fits in underneath that, you can actually put a, a CD as well. So 
you kind of fit five or six cities into that. Um, oh, uh, I got some confirmation for you, Eva. I hope you're still uh, watching us. Uh, if the pledge is declined because there's not enough money, you can keep trying to fix the pledge and Kickstarter will help guide you through that process. So there you go, good news. Uh, but do call your bank and have a range overdraft. It saved your life, it's really like <laughs> So when you don't have enough money, it's always good to have that. But yes, yeah, so if it's declined, Kickstarter will ask you, uh, is not enough funds? Uh, how do we do this? Yeah, but if you will go, if you have arranged overdraft, this will not happen. It will, it will just go into arranged overdraft. Yeah. Uh, you have seven days to resolve. There we go. That was right. That's the case. So you'll have seven days to resolve the payment issue before um, that is cancelled. So if the the Kickstarter ch tries to charge your bank, it has been declined for whatever reason. Whether your bank thinks it's a uh, weak transaction sometimes it does that uh, or whether it is uh, you don't have enough cash you have seven days to resolve that with the kickstarter that's more enough time uh, yeah so you have seven days to go into a range of draft or you have to top up your account so yeah so it will be you you'll receive an email from kickstarter to warning you that you have not enough money and what is going on what's going to happen so seven days you have seven days you can go to Kickstarter support for more information. So that's sorted, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, whoever just joined us, once again, Ash and Peter Connolly here, the composer Hello. for the Tomato 4, 5, and 6, and now the Dark Angel Symphony, which is going to happen now, it seems. Uh, we just got another fiver <laughs> for <Hey>. someone. <laughs> Uh, so that's good to know. It's all good. It's all five good. pounds. All the money counts. So you know, it's all good to have. Uh, just would like to highlight that there will be a shop available to purchase additional stuff after the Kickstarter. The, it will be more expensive than currently. Case so those poster will not be at ten pounds. It probably will be fifteen or more. Uh, or you know, CD will be different. So you will not have the luxurious CD packaging you can get on Kickstarter. It will be normal jewel case or DVD case rather with um, all this decent side, but it will not be like this beautiful one that you saw on Kickstarter. So if you would like to have a couple of those, you can increase your pledge by adding, I believe it's 35 pounds. Um, uh, no, it's 30 pounds. So if you increase your pledge by 30 pounds, you can get extra copy of CD and it will be a luxurious Kickstarter CD. Yeah. Uh, but the one you buy in the shop will be standard packaging, the one you would expect to buy in the shop. So still a bit beautiful, of course. Still a beautiful, still be professionally done, but it's not going to be Kickstarter exclusive. So if you want to have a couple of those saved, uh, pledge or increase your pledge now. Uh, shit music will be available in the shop again on a higher price kickstarter people will be able to you guys will be able to uh, Get 10% discount, but again, it will be more expensive still so you might want to Increase your with add-ons right now t-shirts vests will all be available We have more than 30 variations of t-shirts actually wow. probably about 40 now um, probably more. We can yeah, probably way more than that because I know that one two three four five six seven eight nine I think it's 26 we have overall designs, 26, 26 designs we currently have for t-shirts, women's fitted t-shirts and unisex t-shirts and vests. Um, so that's 20 pounds each basically, so you can get them uh, in different sizes as well. That will be sent to you via survey. They will be available on the, in the shop as well, but at a higher price as well. So get them on Kickstarter while you can cheap bargain. Um, yeah, so it doesn't seem we have any more questions or comments from people. Still watching, hopefully, the busy pledging more. Oh, <laughs> yes, they've got the credit cards out. Yeah, get the credit cards out. Or, uh, shop will be supporting PayPal, by the way, for those of you who can't uh, get, um, who don't have credit cards, some of people don't. Um, so there will be PayPal option, and there'll still be Stripe option to pledge with your debit or credit card as well. Um, final thoughts. This is our last stream, by the way, before Christmas. So yes, yeah. this is why we have Christmas tree. Uh, so final thoughts, Peter. What are your final words to the people who backed the project? 621 people so far. I, I, it's, uh, words can't describe, but, but you know, thank you so much for generous pledges. Um, you know, every penny counts, everything mounts up, you know. Um, 
I'm overwhelmed that the response has been absolutely fantastic so far, you know. Um, and it's great to know that there's there's a fan base out there that want this to happen and have made it happen, so it will happen. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. From day one, uh, when we were talking about ideas for this, when I was talking, showing you the my folder, like what we can do, like you know, we can highlight this, we can do this, we can do yeah. your biography, you know, all that stuff. What he said was, uh, "No, I don't want to be the center of this. This is the ultimate fan experience, and we are making it for the fans. It's about the fans because we, the fans, because I'm a fan. Uh, we still play the game. We still remember the games. We still create fan artworks." Doing music, fan fix, cosplay, level editors, patches. There's lots of people fix the angel of darkness to like yeah, you know, yeah. enable snow and things like that. So uh, this fan culture basically ensures that these games are still remembered and played. So without us, these games would be forgotten. That's what you yes. said to uh, me. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so you were really keen on basically making fans the center of this. I wanted to be fan driven, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I mean, rather than you and your music, it was more about the fans, yeah. fan experience there. That's why we have the cover of the uh, Dark Angel Symphony is drawn by Ina Vizhanina, like, you know, both covers. This is not the CD you're going to get, by the way, this is just a sample. Uh, but yeah, this is why we have all that, you know, all the artwork, like logo was designed by Lara Titova and, uh, um, Russian artist and graphic designer who designed those signature collection of the t-shirts with the characters playing uh, various instruments. Everyone's favorite is Janice, of course. <laughs> uh, so, you know, and Jennifer as well, working there tirelessly. Jay Walker and uh, Laurie also helping us a lot of behind the scene work. There's so many people involved in this. I already mentioned Tatiana, Terence. There's lots of us who have done a lot of work. There are lots of fans who worked tirelessly for two years to make this happen. Obviously, Peter was involved in this whole thing. Yeah, yeah they have worked a lot harder on what I've worked. I mean, obviously, I've got my hard work to do now, but uh, to be honest, we wouldn't be where we are with this without the fans and it, that's what it is about it's 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 all about the fans by the fans by the fans for the fans that's the fans, what our, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, our original uh, tagline for this well um, i mean I, you know you know when i worked when i worked on these all these years ago i never thought i would be sitting here 15 20 years on and it's still reached, saying just reached 60 k yay 105 pounds fun, uh, 105 percent he's that excited he can't uh, use that's it. simon <laughs> who was asking us a question earlier for 178 pounds he pledged also we had uh oh canubis increased their pledge from 790 to 835 pounds six months ago amazing guys well done thank you, thank you so thank much you. we definitely will put this money to good use to improve the music and you still have 30 I'll actually, no, you have 29 hours and 20 minutes to <laughs> pledge. Uh, so keep pledging. All the money goes into music. We're going to make it great. Um, ultimate fun experience. Uh, so, you know, thank you all so much for all your support. So um, from my, my final words would be that it was difficult this whole two years. Uh, obviously, we all have full-time job. You had a full-time full job. job yeah. I'm a slugger. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he quit to, just so he could invest all his time onto this. Uh, sometimes, like, I would message, because we have, like, specific group on Facebook, and we have, like, specific messengers, messenger groups as well, where four o'clock in the morning, you go, oh, I just got this working, <laughs> and I had to go to work, and... Three hours, <laughs> so it was tiring, tiring, tiring job. Everyone who is involved in this can tell you that. It but has been, yeah. It is. It it it, it will pay off. Uh, yeah. There's still a lot of things to do. Obviously, this is just the beginning. We just got the funds to do this, so there's yeah. a lot of work to do. There's still shops to sort out, with logistics and all that stuff. We have it all nailed. To we know who is our providers, who is our uh, producers for t-shirts, for CDs, for vinyls. We have. All of them penciled in. We have we are in talks with that, so we came prepared. But there's still a lot of things to do, so it's going to be crazy period um, for us. And we worked tirelessly. We had all kinds of stuff and going on. It gave us. It, it was difficult this whole two years, but 
we made it at least. I we did. We had a we had music had a bunch of ideas. Players. You know what might work, what might not work. What we all agree on, what we all, what you know, the, my, the majority disagree on. But it, it, it's been a great team effort. Um, you know what 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 you see now is the result of two years of hard work behind the scenes. Yeah, we've had the quiet um, now since we already reached. 60k. I can't yeah. risk saying all that. <laughs> uh, we had a big backslash, backlash as well on the day one that people expected for some reason this to be a game. <laughs> like we we were not allowed to talk about this until the reveal day. So we tried to hint, you know, Peter Connolly is involved. Guess, you know, it's you know, there's Peter Connolly. Actually, if you look at the teaser images for the regional, I actually hid a silhouette of music instrument. You don't even know this, but yeah, I did. <laughs> I did, there's a silhouette of cello and the one of the cover up clips that reveal like just where you can just, just about see the faces. There's a cello hidden in there. Wow, if you put the brightness all the way to the top, you can see the cello and <laughs> you know, I was like, come on guys, you I know. know. Uh, the, the build up, the build up was, um, I, I, I really wanted to tell people, you know, I really want to shout it out from the rooftops, but. Uh, you just you just can't you know you're, you're under kind of like not all but you know yeah yeah you just can't you know the things have to be done right and and um and a lot of people did guess it's going to be something music related and you know people like you know peter connelly isn't what yeah. has to be that. but no but jennifer milbert is it's going to be something related to the game oh it's going to be audiobook because she's like but Jennifer has other talents as well, not just audiobook, you know, she's our copy editor. We wish we could have said there and then, but we just, you know, we, yeah. we just weren't allowed to. Our so. hands were tied in, That's so, you know, there's a lot of things and no people want to know there and then, even though this is fan, people say, oh, this is just a fan project. It was, to extent it is, but actually it's not because involved you know and uh, uh we had it's obviously there's legal stuff involved in that so it's not just someone agreed their pledge great thank you uh someone actually pledged uh, 20 or 30 pounds thank you i'm gonna read the name just to be in tradition to read the names out so um 105 percent as well 105 percent yeah uh, so it's great it is uh evo brands 35 pounds for cd collection thank you thank of that. You. uh so yeah you know we had a lot of work in this it was day one was probably this dif the most difficult when we i woke up at seven i hardly slept i took a day off from work on that and i in my you know in my zombie slippers that look like this by the way i'm gonna show them <laughs> <laughs> in my zombie slippers with a glass of pepsi walking to my computer shivering from nervous breakdown going oh people are expecting the game and we're revealing that it's not and we did have quite a few people going oh i'm not interested this is just the music and i know the amount of messages that came even though we were trying to say what we could on our page the amount of messages that were coming through and so can you tell us what it's about and i was like it was really hard to turn kind of you know just i really even now to we still get yeah. when is the game out it's yeah. like <laughs> come on <laughs> but first hour was very difficult but then fans woke up uh, lots of fans woke up as well and they were like oh this is exciting of course I, some of them said well I was hoping for the game but this is also great you know and stuff like that and now we're here it's all happening this is now forgotten like a bad dream that day yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but to be fair that I respect what people think you know but yeah. it, 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 and what they wish for but then the day I mean that I yeah, that wasn't possible. I think the clues were, you know, were there, <laughs> but you see what you want to see. So yeah, it was it, it was hard to tell people. It's it's difficult to explain to people like why can't you say me these things? Why can't you tell me what it is? Because we can't, <laughs> not allowed to. <laughs> you know, it's not just our decision here. We uh, got our hands tied totally yeah, and let sailed. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of people in the world in this. A lot of behind the scene work involved in this, not just, you know, oh, let's just kick that right now and then. Uh, no, it's not wish. Like that. No, <laughs> we wish it was the case, yeah, but it's not. And yeah, so two and a half years of work, finally paying off. We now can safely say we will make this music happen. Any pledges that you will happen from now on in the next 30, 29 hours, I should say. Um, will be invested into making this music in grander we'll have richard nelson who was on a track two three maybe it depends how much money we get um 
There'll be a shop as well, as I said before. I'm gonna repeat that Kickstarter backers will receive 10% discount, but the shop will be more expensive than the current pledges are. All the items that don't sell on Kickstarter, like the statues or some pendants, all the excess will go on the shop, but we're not making more units. Only excess. They are strictly limited. Strictly limited. However many it seems yeah. on Kickstarter is. Yeah, so you will have it numbered as well on these. Uh, yes. So there will be, there, be a sign as well. Yeah, you will have an option for that. Uh, so please don't feel like, you know, oh, I could have bought it in the shop later on. No, they are still limited. We're not making more. They're just limited. And they'll be more expensive for in the shop as well. Despite the 10% discount you guys are going to get, they will be uh, more expensive. And also the Kickstarter exclusive CD packaging is still Kickstarter exclusive. Not a single unit will be available outside the Kickstarter. So if you want to have a few of them, you can do that via add-on by increasing your pledge. By If you click on manage my pledge thing, just increase it by the amount of CDs you want. So 30 pounds per CD, say like 90, you get three. Or you can add the t-shirt and stuff like that. So it's all, all the instructions are there on our main Kickstarter page. It's dead easy. It's not nothing difficult. And then you will receive a survey how you wish to uh, these um, funds assigned. The survey will be sent to you within a few weeks time or maybe even a month. Don't panic if you don't receive it right away because the funds are transferred to us in a couple of weeks time as well. We don't get the funds right away. Um, then we need to work out logistics, how we're gonna keep the information and then we're gonna send you a survey. So don't panic if you don't receive it right away. We're working on it. Uh, uh, Sardox Panfish, that's probably the last question I'm gonna read. Uh, will there be some later attempt or like further fundraisers to have the orchestra done? Now, uh, I did mention it yes. previously, but uh, that's just uh, repeated. All the money that we raise from the Kickstarter from now on, all the excess money, all the money raised from the shop are going towards this project. So if by X date uh, we receive 180,000 from the shop somehow, yes, absolutely, definitely using, making the shop happen, uh, making the orchestra happen. Um, if we reach 90,000, reach it now, it's getting a lot. So yeah, uh, but in terms of the fundraisers, we are considering potentially having one for the concerts, maybe, but yes. only after this is all delivered, you receive your CDs, you receive everything. Only after that, we will see. The, 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 the beauty of what's happening now is that we will have the music ready. So it's just a case of having the funds to be able to hire the 82-piece orchestra, the venue. And it's not cheaper. And in, in, in an 82-piece orchestra, you could be looking at about 60, 70,000 pounds for that. You know, so uh, if I actually divide that by the by each position, uh, you know, it's 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 within music, um, music the musicians union rates, but you know, it's it's not that bad, you know, but it's a lot of money to raise. So, yeah, if if, we, if we've got the music and it's all ready to go, we can probably do the orchestra for less than one hundred eighty thousand because that's already taken care of. So. You know, we'll see what we'll, happens. We'll see, we'll, we'll see what happens. Also, yeah. in terms of the concert, I would like to say that our show is not just going to be people playing music and someone hosting it, like Eric Loren, who confirmed that he will, and Joe Dijon hosting the gig, Brilliant. if we will have the gig. Um, but um, we plan, we already know who is going to do the uh, decoration. Ma Matt Schritz just joined, uh, the our very own sculptor. Hi Matt, you're a bit late. Hello Matt. <laughs> but yeah. Nice sleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what? Uh, so yeah, we have a provider and producer who will create us an amazing show. It will be spectacular. It will be theatrical. It will be have three D light involved in that. So we wanted to create a grand show if we would reach like three hundred k or whatever it is on our stage call. Yeah. Uh, so if we will have a further fundraiser, it will be. For that kind of show it's not just going to be an orchestra playing tunes yeah, yeah it's, be it's going to be, yeah, it's, going to be it's going to be an experience we're delivering an experience to the fans and not like we said originally an ultimate fan experience that's yeah. what the concert is going to be you're going to sat there you're going to be involved in this and you're going to be crying your eyes out guaranteed like i, I know i will i'm quite you know reserved first i don't really get emotional unless it's a disney film <laughs> but you know the your music this this devil here will destroy me at the concert, I'm sure it will. Uh, but again, that's 
for us to think in the future after this is all delivered we will look what we can do next um but who knows the shot might make it happen but we'll see, we'll see. The, the, yep. the good thing now hitting the main goal it opens doors we can start to branch off from that to, to, to export other, other avenues of what we can do what we can't do so yeah thank you so far thank you thank you for your support thank you for all of you who watched us thank you who will be watching this later on because we can always watch it later thank you for those who send us questions thank you for those who pledged during the streams thank you for 620 people who pledged before that because you made this happen this is all yours this is all your fault <laughs> um this is beautiful larry is now showing up nicely on the because it's darker now uh, so yeah we will once again before we go uh, we did not forget about the gathering uh, the free gathering that you know you don't have to pay to attend but you have to pay for drinks and food uh, in derby in the end of may beginning of june we're just confirming which venue it's going to be either the one near ashburn road with the original core design studios were or by pride park where uh, core design were based at the end of the of their life that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the angel of darkness was made in chronicles is turn four was made there as well no turn four was at, um, ashburn road yeah. so we will see one of those uh, Kickstarter backers will receive the first information on that. So don't book your flights just yet. Uh, I don't want to give you the date be be until we finalize so you don't have to cancel it. You know, I know how difficult it is with flights, but you will know soon. Um, yeah, and we also have the Mertie's notes here, but Mertie is unfortunately sick today, so he couldn't come. Next stream, when we, we, which we will have at some point as well, probably when the shop launches, we'll try to get Mertie in. But this is already given to one amazing backer who backed us on day one um in the first like 10 seconds as the kickstarter went live <laughs> uh, so i'm sure they're very excited to receive that uh, so yeah thank you for watching thank you for sending your questions if you have any questions that you have further down either use the contact form on our website or uh, send us the tweet or comment on facebook we'll try to answer it as soon as possible uh, so we are signing out now uh, you now have 29 hours and five minutes to do final pledges increase the pledge to ensure you get them for cheaper than it will be in the shop um, uh, so yeah this was me ash and peter connolly thank you thank you once thank again you. and we'll see you guys on our next stream